Um, now you you have are you teaching one class this semester or? Um, this semester, I think I'm terribly lucky. I actually doubled up and taught it last semester, oh. administrative leadership, and um, so I have been giving master classes not only for TTU, but I've been called at about four other universities to give master classes and join them, and it's fantastic. I'm meeting bassoonists I'd never met. I'm listening to them play. We're all on a Zoom call and we're talking about it. Um, we're talking about reed makers and old historical tutors. Um, I'm starting to feel that I'm of that generation where I learned all of this as a teenager, but it's not on the radar of current young performers. So it's rather fun to share, make sure it, that legend and that um, oral tradition continues, shall we say. Yeah, and now, um... What's, what's something that you always want your students, whether it's in a master class or in a lecture hall, whatever it is, what do you want them to take away from, from your classes? So when we're working over the long four-year, two-year platform, the first thing you do is reset all the foundation points, check through, like doing a complete audit of their techniques and their, their approaches to everything to make sure that it's on sound ground so they can get better and better and better for the rest of their career. All you need is one squeaky wheel and one part of the technique and in 10 years they have bad backs or elbows or whatever. So that's a long-term approach. When we're talking about the short-term masterclass, in three to five minutes you want to tell them something or shift something that will change three years of their thinking and their approach to that piece of music. So I start always with the music and then their approach. But I, get, I think the big thing that's distinctive about the students I've had the great privilege to work with is that they're all different. And my goal was not to make them into the Kim Walker School or the Sal Schoenbach School or the William Waterhouse School to use teachers I worked with that were very famous. That used to be the way. And when I went to Curtis, I was told if you study with one other person, you're, you're you know, terminated here. One bad lesson and you're, you fail, you're out. So we were at a pretty high threshold. There were no bad weeks. You turned up mm -hmm. and you're always ready. But now, as I explained it, there's a whole pizza you've got to get. And I might be able to give you three or four slices, but I want you to go see this person for that slice, this person for that slice, these people here, and presentation skills and the like. And I myself have studied with cellists and violinists and several singers and conductors, private lessons, um, going into great depth about how they perform, how they would uh, approach concerts and how they would set themselves to be ready to go on stage. I didn't just study with bassoonists at all. And so I try and impart all of that approach and that curiosity. So I guess the distinctive feature is that in about five seconds I can tell you a student from some years ago because they get their own sound based on their own uh their own body resonance if you will you know you know how kids drive parents crazy by <laughs> tapping on their chest to the back are we there yet but also we all have head resonance like singers work on and I'm not sure woodwind players used to talk about this I'm sure it's quite current now but 25 years ago it wasn't and making sure that you get that exact combination of the head and body resonance for each bassoonist means that everybody actually plays with their own sound um, that they adapt for Strauss, Mozart, um, Scott Joplin, wherever they go with this. And so they're actually, there's a kind of integrity about their playing. And I guess I feel really super excited that virtually every student I ever taught, um, one or two exceptions, all got a plum job as a teacher or a performer in major centers. Mm -hmm. And so when we had a hundred of those success stories, I moved into administration and said, I've done it. <laughs> there you go. Um, met, met, that, met, met that number. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, I'll get 40 players out there, but it's 101 and they are in prominent positions. They're enjoying their life. They're very good at what they are doing, where they're doing it. Sure, some of them would have loved Chicago Symphony instead of where they are, but you know, those jobs open every 20 years, I don't know. And so the, the, there are very few. So you've got to be in the, the right place at the right time. But I think it was highly satisfying to see some people say, I'd rather be a second bassoonist in a great orchestra. I'd rather be first bassoonist in a chamber orchestra. I'd rather be teaching. I'd rather be 
doing something else where I teach chamber music and a, a variety of topics. I mean, they actually all found something that resonates perfectly for them, their psyche, and their talent, and they're really comfortable. So that's been wonderful to watch over the over the years. Yeah.